Welcome back to the Value Investors Club. I'm your host, Simon Wunderlich. Let's get right into it with VIC readings, the formula where we look at the best of the best. Value investment recommendations by the best of the best value investors out there. Today we have Best Buy. BBY is the ticker. Uh, it's a short recommendation. Uh, price at the point of filing is $73.70. Um, description. Before that, this is not a recommendation, not advice. Please do your own diligence before investing into anything. Best Buy Co. Inc., Best Buy, BBY, or the company, is a rich field, Minnesota headquartered retailer with physical operations across North America. The company had 1,144 stores as of YEFY 2022, with 984 within the U.S. domestic and 160 in Canada international segments. BBY's store portfolio is highly concentrated with California 135 stores, 14% of total domestic, Texas 98, 10%, and Florida 61, 6%, New York 49, 5%, Illinois 43, 4%, representing 39% of the total domestic footprint. BBY's 160 stores within international are split between Ontario, 69, uh, 43%, uh, British Columbia, 27, 70%, Alberta, 24, 15%, and uh, Quebec, 23, 14%. Roughly 95% of the store portfolio is leased. BBY combines omni-channel capabilities and vendor store within a store concepts to allow closer vendor partnerships and higher quality customer experience. BBY claims to continuously look for opportunities to optimize its store space, renegotiate leases, and selectively open or close locations to support its operations. BBY sells products across six key categories, including number one, computing and mobile phones, desktop, notebooks, peripherals, peripherals, um, mobile phones included uh, related mobile network carrier commissions, networking, tab tablets, wearables, including smartwatches. And number two, consumer electronics, digital imaging, health and fitness products, home theater, portable audio, including headphones and portable speakers, and smart home. Number three, appliances, large appliances, including dishwashers, laundry, oven, refrigerators, and small appliances, including blenders, coffee makers, and vacuums. Number four, entertainment, drones, gaming, including hardware, peripherals, and software, movies, music, toys, virtual reality, and other software. Five, uh, services, uh, consultation, delivery, design, health-related services, installation, memberships, repair, setup, technical support, and warranty-related services. And number six, other. Other product offerings, including baby, food, and a beverage, luggage, outdoor living, and sporting goods. Like other leading retailers, BBY has developed digital capabilities to both conveniently meet its customers' shopping behaviors as well as to improve product avail availability and delivery times. Customers within BBY's domestic and international segments who purchase a product product online have the choice to pick up product at a Best Buy store, including a curbside pickup at most stores. At an alternative pickup location or take a delivery direct to their homes. Most of BBY's merchandise is shipped directly from manufacturer to its distribution centers. According to management, BBY's ship from store capability has allowed the company to improve product availability and delivery times, which aids in converting sales and driving repeat business. Where BBY most differentiates itself from other retailers is within its service offerings. BBY provides customers a full suite of services to complement its product offerings, including consultation, delivery, design, installation, memberships, protection plans, repair, setup, technical support, and health, safety, care, and caregiving, monitoring, and support. 
While services is a low percentage of consolidated revenue, 5% of total FY 2022 revenue and 5% in Q2 FY 2023, Best Buy is leaning into his uh, this uh, capability, attempting to position in the minds of consumers as a trusted source of technical expertise and a valuable second opinion to the customer's own primary research. I think BBY is a short, given retail macroeconomic dynamics, as well as the fact that BBY's total tech offering will not move the needle on earnings or cash flow. Number one, can Best Buy sell consumer electronics at pre-pandemic gross margins, or will industry-wide inventory issues and inflation impact the consumer, hurt revenue, earnings, and cash flow? The current debate between retail bolts and bears is focused on a few key questions. Number one, the health of the consumer in 2023 amid double-digit inflation. Number two, the level of promotional activity required to clear remaining inventory bloat in 2H 2022-2023 relative to 2019. Number three, normalized growth, uh, gross and operating margins relative to 2019. And number four, the extent of unit growth versus price growth in 2023. Companies answering these questions directly at Goldman Sachs, September 17th, uh, 7th, um, 2022, Global Retail Conference have uh, decidedly mixed responses and therefore not much can be gleaned. Accurately um, assessing the health of the consumer is a challenge. Bank of America Merrill Lynch sees U.S. goods consumption around 5% above pre-pandemic levels. This is despite Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index hovering around four-year lows uh, across all tertiles of income levels. Inflation is a top concern as it impacts the level of real spending by consumers. Consumer Pr Price Index, CPI, uh, a widely quoted but potentially understated data set uh, tracking inflation is up 8.5% year over year in July, while personal comp consumption expenditure, PCE, inflation is up 6.3% year over year. The Federal Reserve is expected to continue hiking interest rates over the near to medium term in order to cool inflation. Although inflation is running hot, data indicates spending is still healthy. Monthly card spending per household, excluding food, gas and utilities, appears to have rebounded in August, while household savings and checking balances by income are well above pre-pandemic levels. Taken together, this data suggests uh, consumers have adequate uh, dry powder to weather higher prices. Further, a slide from Best Buy's 2022 Investor Day presentation indicates that consumer spending on technology has remained stable since uh, 2000. The second big retail question addressed promotional activity across the industry. As major retailers work to clear the level of excess inventory, which was pulled forward through a combination of stimulus fuel demand, supply chain constraints, and a violent correction in both technology stocks and market sentiment amid macroeconomic and geopolitical fears. In July 2022, Target and Walmart pulled their previously issued full-year guidance as they pre-announced earnings misses dri driven by markdowns and impairments to clear bloated inventory levels. Within retail, apparel and electronics are the two categories which have been the most exposed categories. On Walmart Q Walmart's Q2 2022 earnings call, CFO John David Riney fielded a question around inventory markdowns. Kellyanne Bania, BMO Capital Markets Equity Research. Can you clarify the dollar amount of inventory that you estimated would be excess? And uh, you can you help us understand how much of that is in apparel or other categories and the magnitude of markdown that you expect to clear through that and the timing of when you expect to get back to a clean position? John David Rainey, uh, Executive Vice President and Chief Financial Officer. Sure. So if you just take the U.S. inventory increase in the second quarter of 11 billion, if you decompose that, about 40% of that is due to inflation. So don't think units, think just dollars. In terms of the types, the inventory issues were most acute in apparel in the second quarter. As we look into the third quarter, I'd say it's home, electronics, and apparel. 
are probably the areas that stand out the most. Several companies at Goldman's conference noted some recent improvement in the level of markdowns. However, one month does not form a trend, and there will be a considerable consternation ahead of the Q3 and the extremely important holiday shopping season. The third question around normalized operating margins as at retailers is important to consider as labor expenses continue to rise. Best Buy's 2022 Investor Day indicates average wage, wage rate was risen, uh, has risen by 20% in the last two years. Given the importance of services such as Geek Squad to the company's holistic offering, Best Buy may have less room for SG&A cuts than other retailers. The fourth question around price versus unit growth is also unknown. Best Buy's management believes three things. Number one, the average U.S. household now has a total of 25 connected devices across 14 different categories compared to 11 in 2019. There's an overall larger installed base of consumers using technology. People own more tech devices than ever before. Number two, people will continue to use technology more and need or want to replace or upgrade their products. 30 to 50% of people who purchase tech items specifically for COVID reasons plan to upgrade or replace those purchases. Number three, iterative innovation in consumer technology drives upgrade cycles. Bolts will argue consumer technology is more relevant a category than ever before. A study of 11,000 um, rescue time um, users found iPhone users spend an average of 3 hours and 15 minutes on the phone every day. The 2019 US consensus found average one-way commute time was 27.6 minutes. This means the iPhone has roughly 6.5x more utilization than a car on usage time alone. Bears will argue that the, le that the base level technology has become so effective that the latest consumer devices are no longer providing step function benefits, which will slow upgrade cycles going forward, especially as disposable income budgets increasingly get cut. A Morgan Stanley August 2022 research piece on various retail categories indicated that consumer electronic share of real PCE has only fallen 10.5% from COVID-19 peaks, suggesting the category has considerable uh, room to fall on both pricing and unit growth before inventory levels normalize. This gives ammunition, ammunition uh, to both bull and bear arguments. Bears might argue that Best Buy will struggle to realize pricing growth within consumer technology retail sales until the reversion enters the 40% to 60% mean reversion zone. Bulls might argue consumer technology spending resilience is a feature of the increasing dependency on best-in-class devices and that spend spending will remain resilient as it has since 2000. Taking a view on each of these four questions is imperative before investing in any retailer ahead of FY 2022 holiday season. Bloomberg's headline that Apple was planning to pause production of the iPhone 14 at select manufacturers was enough to con convince me that BBY's stock has asymmet had, had asymmetric skew to the downside in the broader technology retail space. While this is not enough info to underwrite this short, it's evident to me that macro trends are not working in BBY's factor. The company consumer will not be bailing the company out when other retailers have all cut estimates for 2H 2022. Second, can BBY drive higher share of consumers' wallet in consumer electronics by achieving success with its total tech subscription offering? Total Tech is a $199 annual membership offering launched nationwide on October 5th, 2021, a supplement to the existing free-to-join My Best Buy membership, which has 120 million existing members. Total Tech subscribers members receive perks such as unlimited 24-7 Geek Squad support, special member pricing discounts on merchandise, up to two years of protection on most purchases, and free shipping and installation among other offerings. BBY disclosed in its 2022 Investor Day materials that Total Tech currently has 4.5 million members. 
On the company's Q2 FY 2023 earnings call, CEO Corey Sue Barry stated the company's goal with Total Tech is to create a mode around the consumer and to make it, it kind of inconceivable for them to buy consumer electronics anywhere else. BBY hopes Total Tech can help the company grow incremental spend from members, increase a frequency of purchase and grow a share of wallet. Management has not yet disclosed how many Total Tech subscribers are currently being retained beyond their initial sign-up. However, management did provide some anecdotal context around how the company is approaching the upfront investment as well as early indicators that the strategy is, in their view, working. BBY's March earnings call presentation disclosed that Total Tech is profitable on a standalone basis. Management commentary here should be taken with a large grain of salt. This could mean anything. Management lack of disclosure to build out Total Tech indicates to me they are hiding something here. My personal view is the total value of services BBY provides is actually cannibalizing the lifetime profitability of its core consumer. While there is not sufficient unit economics data to prove that out, there is little debate and Total Tech is weighing on margins. BBY's efforts to invest in Total Tech comes at a cost to profitability. In BBY's Q2 FY 2023 10Q, the company stated that its Total Tech membership offering was the primary driver of lower services margin rates, primarily due to incremental customer benefits and associated costs. On BBY's Q2 FY 2023 earnings call, CEO Corey Sue Barry provided investors a bit of clarity into management's strategic thinking around the program, but stressed its impact is still too early to gauge. As we have previously stated, uh, shared uh, from a financial perspective, Total Tech is a near-term investment to drive longer-term benefits. Over time, we expect the incremental spend we garner from members will lead to higher operating income dollars. BBY's management team stated uh, there are several things the company is seeing with the program that give them confidence that, the co- that customers value the membership and that their thesis is in general playing out. At the same time, consumer electronics is a low-frequency category and the company is in a unique macro environment, meaning it will take time to truly assess the performance. BBY management commentated they are encouraging with the pace at which the company is acquiring new members and that in Q2, nearly half of new members joining the program were either new or labs customers, reinforcing how the value of this program resonates beyond the company's existing loyal customers. On the Q2 earnings call, management guided for 60 to 80 base points of services a gross margin pressure attributable to total tech, which is anticipated to abate a bit as the company gets into Q3 Q and Q4 total tech's initial launch is left. BBY management sees about 100 basis points gross margin pressure from BBY's pre-pandemic level, which should subside uh, as more customers sign up and drive more incremental product sales. However, All of this must be proven out uh, in the numbers before the market will care about it. A key debate in the uh, the stock has emerged around how sticky total tech uh, customer subscription will be. While bulls can argue, unlimited tech support, warranties and special discounts could incentivize uh, customers to renew their subscription. Bears uh, bears, uh, could argue, can argue, that installation of major consumer electronics applies appliances and home theaters, it's much more of a one-time purchase than wouldn't necessarily require a subscription. Another another debate in the stock around Total Tech is how much the subscription can drive higher operating income through increased share of wallet. Management anecdotally believes early indicators are proving their thesis is correct. As we have previously shared, from a financial perspective, Total Tech is a near-term investment to drive longer-term benefits. Over time, we expect the incremental spend we garner from members will lead to higher operating income dollars. There are several things we are seeing with a program that gives us confidence that customers value the membership and that our thesis in general is playing out. At the same time, consumer electronics is a low-frequency category and BBY is in a unique macro environment, meaning it will take for the company to truly assess the performance. Management will continue to monitor the program and iterate on the offerings as the company learns more. 
Bolt may argue that Best Buy is showing some green shots that the company has able uh, to drive higher share of wallet through its strategic initiatives. Management calls out success with a Best Buy branded credit card as driving a valuable and sticky relationship with customers. The company continues to see growth in cardholders. More than 25% of BBY's revenue is transacted on the Best Buy branded card, and cardholders have been increasing the use of their card outside Best Buy stores as well. These customers tend to be more engaged with Best Buy over time, with higher frequency and spend than non-card holders. However, management retices to publish the figures while pulling FY 2025 guidance just six months ago make it clear that the subscription service alone cannot carry the company through its myriad of industry-wide and macroeconomic issues. On rough math, if Best Buy were able to utilize Total Tech to grow its shares of a consumer electronics customer wallet by 10% from FY 2022 figures, that implies an annual revenue uplift of $2 billion. Further, assuming EBIT margins of 6%, a discount to management's previously issued FY 2025 non-GAAP EBIT margin guidance of 6.3% to 6.8%, on Toda's, uh, today's share count of $225 million, this implies a $79.65 stock, 8% above where it trades today. Note that Best Buy's uh, 2022 Investor Day slides indicate the company believes 20% of wallet growth is achievable. This implies a 12% upside to the stock price. To conclude, even in BBY's blue sky scenario of 20% wallet share growth, the stock is 8% to 12% up with a lot of downside. This isn't, a most, this isn't the most polished idea, so apologize in advance. I'm continuing to refine my thoughts here. Catalyst Incremental Total Tech Disclosure, Apple Earnings on October 27. Thank you very much for tuning in. See you next.